What if death didn't have to be the end? Instead, what if you were guaranteed an afterlife? And what if one day you were brought back to life for this reason? Or what if this is happening to you right now? These are not questions of science fiction. This is the humanity's ultimate goal. Megastructures capable of harvesting the power of the sun could be humanity's ticket into deep space exploration. They can also be home to advanced civilizations of aliens that we believe are out there. We just can't seem to find them. With the ability to create complex simulations and replicate consciousness, these megastructures can also be a tool for reincarnation. And recent findings may have detected one in our very own galaxy. Imagine this. You're on the way to the dentist carrying a box of 12 perfectly glazed donuts. They treat you right, make your teeth a healthy shade of white. Plus, you think the receptionist is kind of cute, so why not thank them with a sweet snack? The line at the donut shop was a bit wrong, so you're running a little late. To make up for lost time, you hurry across the street and bam, you're hit by a bus. Oh, and you're in London, so it's one of those bunk bed buses, so you're really screwed. You anyway, lights out, you're dead, and, well, now what? Are you headed to the afterlife, getting reincarnated as your favorite breed of house cat, or taking an eternal nap? Since the dawn of rational thought, humans have wondered if there is life after death. But now, with the extreme advancement of technology, the question is becoming, can we create a life after death? The answer may seem like science fiction, but theoretical physicists believe that such a hypothetical is not only possible, but may be probable in a species' ultimate quest for immortality. And how can this be possible, you might ask? Surprisingly, accomplishing this may be easy. Not easy like eating some pizza rolls and calling it a meal, but easy in the sense that scientists have already figured out how to make this possible and can start the process as soon as today. The difficulty is that all we need is a shit ton of energy and a Dyson Sphere. What exactly is a Dyson Sphere? Well, it's the greatest and most powerful uninvented invention in human history. In other words, it's currently a hypothetical megastructure. At the root of the hypothetical is energy, or how we can obtain a substantial amount of energy to do substantial things. Energy makes the world go round literally and figuratively. It is needed to accomplish anything. You need energy to get out of bed and brush your teeth or to rob your local zoo. Your getaway car uses energy in the form of fossil fuels to speed away, and the stolen panda in your passenger seat gets energy from the chocolate bar you give it to calm it down. But that's all elementary in the grand scheme of the universe. To colonize space and bring everyone who ever lived back to life. We can't just give the Earth a bunch of those sketchy gas station energy drinks. We need something more powerful than anything on the planet. We need the sun. That's where the Dyson Sphere comes into play. Theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson first proposed the Dyson Sphere in 1960, speculating how an advanced civilization could prosper utilizing all the energy of the sun. That's right. We don't just want to suck out a sliver of a ray from the yellow goofball in the sky. We want to harness all of the energy from the floating fireball ancient civilizations used to worship like a god. And theoretically, we can do it. Freeman suggested building a habitable artificial sphere the size of a planetary orbit to accomplish this task. The sphere would consist of a shell of solar collectors around the star so that all of the energy would hit the reflecting surface to be used creating a massive living space and an enormous energy bank. 400 septillion watts of energy per second, to be exact, which is the equivalent of a trillion times our current worldwide energy usage. Researchers like Stuart Armstrong of Oxford University point out that an actual sphere around the sun is completely impractical. However, in the years since Dyson's proposal, the idea has been modified to a more practical Dyson Swarm, while keeping the premise and goal intact. The Dyson Swarm would consist of thousands of relatively small mirrors or solar panels that would orbit the sun like a dense cloud of bees buzzing around a hive. The copious amounts of panels would shroud the sun from an external view and capture most of the available solar energy. Armstrong, once a skeptic of Dyson's plan, 
believes that the swarm method is not only practical, but could be manufactured by robots mining materials in as little as several decades. We would have to demolish mercury in the process, but, but who needs mercury anyway? Can't we just be happy with Venus? The Dyson Sphere wasn't originally thought up as a source of a reincarnation machine. It was first a possible solution to the Fermi Paradox. You know, everyone's favorite theoretical paradox by we're not currently hanging out with aliens, even though the universe is so big that we probably should be by now. Dyson and many other scientists theorize that we don't see them because they're all chilling in their own Dyson spheres. The theory is that when an intelligent alien species settles moons and planets in their local stellar neighborhood, and their population increases and consumes more energy, any species would need to turn to their sun and create their version of a Dyson sphere. This has led some researchers to believe that the way to find an advanced alien species is to try to find their Dyson sphere. In 2015, there was speculation that one had been discovered after Yale astronomer Tabitha Boyajian reported a mysterious dimming of light from a star called KIC 8462852, whose irregular flickering looked like nothing researchers had ever seen before. The organization known as SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, conducted a study showing that building a Dyson sphere around a black hole would be effective. The results of the study led the team to report that a megastructure around the stellar mass black hole is detectable in the ultraviolet, optical, near-infrared, and mid-infrared wavelengths via the waste heat radiation in the Milky Way galaxy. While the hunt for our alien neighbors remains a mystery, researchers direct their time to how humans could one day use the Dyson Sphere and the almost endless amount of energy it will provide. Transhumanist Alexei Turkin has led the charge in how a Dyson Sphere would be able to bring the dead back to life and create a virtual afterlife for all to enjoy. Turkin and fellow researcher Maxim Chernyakov developed the Immortality Roadmap, theorizing different ways humans can transcend death. Plan C in the Roadmap details how a Dyson Sphere can be used in this way by drawing from its massive reserve of energy to collect enough personal and historical data of a person's life to build a digital copy. Advanced AI would use DNA and other information to personalize the copies, which can be extracted via global archaeology. After a copy is created, Turkin suggests that it would then be run through an advanced simulation, reliving the person's entire life. Once the simulated life is finished, the copy would then be transformed to a digital afterlife, where they could spend their days with copied consciousnesses of their friends, families, and all those in between. There are many needed steps to get to the point of turning ourselves into Sims, but the paradigm shift that a Dyson Sphere would create would make those steps achievable. When or if we'll get there is still up in the air. We've got to make sure we don't destroy ourselves as a species first. However, as we watch technology advance to unimaginable levels before our very eyes, we need to consider what is truly unimaginable and what just hasn't happened yet. We understand that having that thought process takes an open mind, even faith in the future in many ways. So the easiest thing we can do is break these ideas down and hold on to hope and commitment to making the future a better place. In regards to the Dyson Sphere, biochemist George Dvorsky is doing just that in his paper how to build a Dyson Sphere in five relatively easy steps. His strategy, echoed similarly by Turkin, relies on autonomous nanorobots. Once we get to the point as a civilization where we can excel in using nanotechnology, once we get into space, Dvorsky claims that all we have to do is get energy, mine mercury, get materials into orbit, make solar collectors, extract energy. And then, humanity is set for its next chapter in the cosmos. Even though technology won't advance enough for us to see these steps come to fruition, it's up to us to get the project started and make sure we don't kill ourselves along the way. <laughs>